Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Then down here, we are going to check for a whole bunch, bunch of things. And I'm going to write this out first, and then I'm going to explain it after. So let's make the if statement. We're going to do if cam dot transform dot position dot x is larger than or equal to edge visible position uh, right. Let's do that one first. Minus offset x. And um, can I get the and symbol here? There. And has a right body is equal to false. Cool. So what we're doing here is we are first off checking if the position of the camera is bigger than or equal to the uh, edge where the um, where the element is visible. So we are, this is where we're checking if B is bigger than or equal to A, which is basically the same as checking for A and B, but we are just inverting it. Uh, so we're checking if B is bigger than or equal to A uh, minus our offset so that we don't get weird errors uh, where, we, uh, where it doesn't get to instantiate it before we've, it's too late. And uh, then we're also checking if it already has a right body, because if we've already been there and it's already instantiated something, we don't want to instantiate something on top of it. So, so that's what we're doing here. And then we're going to make an else statement before we write some logic for it. Uh, it's actually going to be an else if. And this one is going to be pretty similar. Uh, this is going to do the same for the left side. So if, if that's not the case, we're going to do transform the position dot x is less than or equal to so this time it's it's less than uh, edge visible position left plus offset x and has a left body is equal to false So here we're doing the exact same calculation, but over here. So we're checking if D has passed C and if we already have a body there. That's basically what we're doing. So in the first if statement, we're going um, we to call a function. Let's start out by making the function, actually, if, because this is where we get to instantiate our body. So let's make a new function right below the uh, update one. We're going to do void make new body. And then we are going to take a parameter. So um, I'm not sure I've shown you parameters in the last video. I think I didn't. And what a parameter is, it's basically an, a variable that you can pass over to the function. So when we are calling the function, we can say, hey, function, you should do all of the, your logic, but you should also remember what this variable is. Uh, and this is going to be of a type int. And we're just going to refer to it as right or left. You could also call it direction, but this is just easier. So uh, we are going to take in a right or left, and it's basically just going to be a one or a negative one value. Um, and this is because we want to invert uh, the position if um, it's either right or the left body we need to instantiate. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do now is we're going to first off calculate the new position for our body. So we're going to make a vector 3, storing a position. We're going to call this new position and we're going to equal it to a new vector 3 open up some parentheses and let's just put the semicolon there while we add it. We're going to write my transform dot position dot x, so our current position, plus the sprite width um, and then time it with our right or left. So if uh, right or left is equal to minus one, it's going to instantiate it 
on, our, on the left side of our current object. And if it's equal to one, it's going to instantiate on the right side. This way, we don't need to do an actual if statement. We can just have it, um, we can just have the computer calculated. And then for the y, we're going to do my transform dot position dot y, simple as that, and the same for the z. So my transform dot position, oops, position dot z, and close it off. So what we're doing here is we are calculating the new position for our new body. And up here we are checking if uh, we can uh, see the edge of the element um, and then calling make new body if we can. And let's actually also just coming out make new body this is the function a function that creates a body on the side um, required cool so now under the vector 3 new position we are going to write transform uh, new actually let me write it out like this we're gonna do instantiate so this is the actual spawning of our new body and inside of this instantiate function uh, it takes three parameters the first one is a transform uh, with what you want to to instantiate and that's just going to be a basically a clone of what we've already instantiated so it's going to be a my transform it's just a clone of the object um, then uh, the next one is the vector 3 storing the position. So that's just going to be a new position. That's what we've just made. And then a uh, quaternion storing the uh, rotation. So that's just going to be my transform that rotation. That's all we need. Um, and what we want to do is we want to be able to uh, set the name of this, set the parent of this, uh, do different things. Uh, things with this new object that we're instantiating with this new body. So we're going to give a store this new body in a variable. We do this by just putting transform and then the name new body in front of it and setting it equal to uh, the instantiation. But one thing we need to do is we need to uh, define a cast. We need to cast this. And that means that we are saying that this instantiating instantiation should be a transform it's not this is just def, uh, defining what the new body variable uh, type is going to be we also need to define what the instantiation type is going to be and we do this by writing else transform afterwards some people write it like this in parentheses in front just transform uh, but you know, it's personal preference. I just think that for beginners, at least, seeing the else in there um, makes it easier to understand what we're doing. Simply saying that we should instantiate it as a transform and put it into a new body variable. Cool. Uh, so let's just comment this out also, for good sake. So we are instantiating our new body and storing him in a variable. Then right below this, we are going to do an if statement where we will use our reverse scale. So if reverse scale is equal to true, so if the uh, object is not tileable, uh, then we want to just do a, a cool nifty little trick, which is take the new body, uh, local scale, so just the scale uh, or the size of the new body, and uh, we want to set this to a new vector 3. Scales are stored just like positional values as a vector 3. And we want to set this to new body dot local scale dot x times minus 1. So we want to invert the, um, the x size of our new body. 
and then comma one comma one. We could also do new body dot local scale dot y new body dot local scale dot z, but that's not something we're going to change right away. Um, actually, I changed my mind. Let's just future proof this and do new body dot local scale dot y comma new body dot local scale dot z. Whenever you don't do something like this, you always just re end up regretting it anyway. So cool. Um, so that's going to allow uh, us to invert the size of our different mountains, which, which will mean that they will perfectly loop. Because I'm going to show you this. If we just take this mountains blue and duplicate it and move it over, we can see that um, the seam here where it tiles looks yeah just plain stupid but if we take the scale here and invert it right now it's minus one so if we make this one you can see that it will almost seamlessly uh, repeat and of course you can see that it's it's tiling here that it's repeating this way but it's much better than a, an ugly seam and when it's just in the background you rarely notice so that's a good alternative to making it tileable which can be a pain. <clears throat> cool. So enough script under the if reverse scale. I'm just going to comment this out. Uh, if not tileable, let's reverse the x size of our object to make it uh, to get rid of ugly seams. Uh, right below this, we are going to write new body dot parent equals my transform dot parent. In a sec, we are going to uh, parent these objects uh, to some empty game objects because we are going to have a lot of uh, foreground dirt once the player progresses, and we don't want this to fill up the hierarchy. So we just want to make sure that if we parent the first one, the rest are also going to be parented. And that's what we're doing here. We're setting the parent of the new body to the same parent as the current one. Then we're going to do an if statement. And I promise you, we are done pretty soon. Um, we are getting closer to the end here. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a song. So, oh wow, we're <laughs> almost half an hour in. Uh, cool, so let's uh, do this quickly. We're going to do an if statement. We're going to check uh, right or left. If it's bigger than zero, then we want to... Here, we want to uh, do new body dot get component uh, of type tiles. Or no, tiling. It was tiling and we want to set has a left body to true. So the reason why we're doing this is because if um, we are instantiating a, a body over here, uh, we need that body to realize that it always already has a body on its right. And if we are instantiating a body over here, we need it to realize that it already has one on its left. So that's what we're doing. So if right or left is uh, bigger than zero, that means that we have instantiated one over here. So we need to tell that new body that it has a left body um, there. So it has a body on its left. And if it's not bigger than zero, that means that we have instantiated one uh, to the whoops to the left of our um, of our ground. And then we need to say new body dot get component tiling dot has a right body equals true. Whew. Wow, okay. So that was most of our logic. Now we just need to fill out the if statements. So uh, in here we want to call make a new body. And we're going to send over the value 1 because we want it on the right. And then we're going to set the has a right body to true. In here, we're going to do make a new body and pass it the value minus one. And we're going to set the has a left body 
two, two. That was it. Let's see if we have any errors. We actually don't. That's amazing. Okay, so let's try and hit uh, play right now. It's only going to work for the foreground dirt. Uh, let's just go into 2D mode here and let's, um, let's just split this view so we can um, see everything that's going on. You can see right now that uh, the camera is uh, really, really wide. So right when we hit play, it should create some uh, new foreground dirt for us and we should be able to see this in the scene view also. So let's try and hit play. And indeed it has created a lot of new uh, dirt for us, which is just what we wanted. And we can even try this if we take our player here and let's just remove his gravity and let's bump up his speed to maybe 50. So we can quickly move over here and, and see what's going on. Whoops. Uh, looks like we have a platform in our way. There. So let's try this again to see if this is working. We can see that it automatically instantiates new prefabs as we are going. So that's really awesome. And for some reason, the platform is currently following us. What's going on here? Have I parented the platform? Yeah, okay, so I dragged it in um, for some reason. Cool. So now the, uh, the tiling should be working. And we can go ahead and add this to our other elements. So that let's select both the background mountains blue and purple. Let's drag in the tiling and let's make sure to select reverse scale because here we want it to reverse. And now those elements are going to loop also. So now we can just uh, explore an infinite world and we will never notice that it's actually only three elements we are using. That was a long one. Okay, cool. So thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, we still have a lot of exciting stuff to do. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.